I was woken up by uh, air raid sirens. And um, after some time, I heard a strong explosion outside of my house. Unfortunately, you could say that this is the modern Russian way of war, as well as uh, being the barbaric past of war. Russia has been targeting Ukrainian civilians. Now we've seen an escalation targeting, in particular, civilian energy infrastructure that's going to make it very difficult for Ukrainians to weather, again, very cold winter temperatures. І це більш, знаєте, так схоже на агонію, коли звіра заганяють в вугол та в куток, так, він вже починає робити зовсім нелогічні речі. І ми, ну, наприклад, я, моя родина, мої друзі, наша організація, ми розуміємо, що нас чекає досить важка зима. As Russian forces continue to lose territory, we see them lashing out and attempting to continue to destroy infrastructure. The pattern shows that there are not only war crimes committed in this war, but it's a war of crimes. The human toll of Russia's war against Ukrainian society has reached a shocking scale very rapidly. 7.7 .7 million internally displaced persons, 7 million who have fled the country and become migrants, over a million Ukrainians ushered into Russian filtration camps, 800,000 homes damaged or destroyed, attacks upon 620 health facilities. She takes us to her brother's house, where she says she was raped by a Russian soldier on August 26. We've just discovered countless atrocities committed in the newly liberated occupied territories. The economy is in eclipse. It's declined by 35%. The majority is slowly and inexorably slipping into poverty. Mental health disorders are rising. An estimated 10 million are at risk. This is a population living under the threat of nuclear attack and living under the threat of a second Chernobyl. In sum, Russia's invasion of Ukraine has battered Ukraine's population. We're all amazed and in some ways overwhelmed by the resilience and courage of Ukrainians in dealing with these massive attacks. But we have to keep in mind what the consequences are. In Ukraine, we are seeing uh, significant uh, mental health uh, challenges with people who have to survive daily. Uh, the air raid sirens, the bombing, and the risk of losing their life. Ну, помимо бомб и всего остального, это будет превращаться там посттравматические последствия, фобии и все остальное. Это ведь не учат нас в школе, как жить при бомбежках или когда твоему сердцу будут представлять дуло, что ты будешь переживать. Більш уважно до всього ставиться, тому що ми розуміємо, що Ну, це не просто загроза. Ми чекаємо цього, бо це так і буде. Ми розуміємо, що часткова інфраструктура е, зруйнована, що ворог може робити що завгодно, і от на цьому тижні це стало зрозуміло. Так? І тому ну, це не просто такі якісь побоювання, це наша реальність на сьогодні. The needs are massive in, in Ukraine. And so um, even with a billion and a half dollars in humanitarian assistance, 8.5 billion dollars, in um, indirect budget support for the government of Ukraine, the gap between needs and um, and resources is growing. And I, I think we can anticipate um, that that gap will grow in the coming year. 
Ukraine's military is pushing ahead with a fast-moving counter-offensive against Russian occupiers and has retaken territory in both the country's northeast and south. Well, the reality right now for Moscow is that they're losing. Uh, they're losing the war. This is, at its core, in part, a war of territorial control. And what we've seen over the last few months is with the various Ukrainian counterattacks, uh, Ukraine has regained territory in Kharkiv, regained some in Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts, and is regaining some territory in the south in Kherson. And what this has done to the Russians has really started to back them into a corner politically, at least, at least Vladimir Putin. And so Russia is trying to inflict pain on the civilians of Ukraine, trying to inflict pain on the people of Ukraine, but it is not going to affect the front line. It's not going to affect the operations in the south and the east of Ukraine, nor is it going to affect uh, the strategic momentum that Ukraine believes it has uh, over the next few months to, to achieve some kind of progress when it comes to the front line and areas that Russia has occupied. You could envision the Russians digging in for a significant period of time, as they uh, appear to be preparing to do, and seeking to wait out uh, the West and its uh, decision to keep supporting Ukraine despite skyrocketing energy prices and the other follow-on effects of that support. You could see them hoping that the political situation inside Ukraine deteriorates, the strength of Zelensky ebbs, uh, and that over time it might be that time is on their side. Ukrainians have shown remarkable resolve and resilience in the face of Russia's existential threat. They remain united, buoyed by their continued successes on the battlefield. U.S. and other allies' assistance has helped staunch Russia's existential threat. But an unsettling question persists. The race is fully on to deliver air defenses, to repair power plants, to expedite emergency relief. But will that assistance arrive at a speed and a scale to stop a runaway catastrophe in Ukraine? The answer may be no. The Russian intent is to drive Ukrainian society to the brink. The solution is not to capitulate and press Ukraine into negotiations. That would reward Putin's war crimes and fail to exploit Russia's failures on the battlefield. The moment is now for the United States and its allies on an urgent basis to double or even triple assistance to stop the siege of Ukrainian society. That is the decision on the table.